Greetings everyone, my name is Flare Blitz and welcome to Aquadine, a kinetic visual novel that combines fantasy and romance while unraveling the mysteries of an ancient civilization. Learn about the people who inhabit this town as they grow to overcome emotional struggles in their respective roots. The story is about a gondola boy who gives part-time tours to pay for his mother's hospital bills. We've already got ourselves a tragic story that's treading on water here, but I like the story with tragedy in it because we can feel whole hearts about these characters. So for looks of it, we've got four different possible routes. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, from long times ago. Long ago, a devastating drought ravaged the land. Their soil was too parched to grow crops and their livestock dwindled in number. Heat strokes, hunger and dehydration took the lives of countless villagers. And apologies if you hear a fan going on in the background, it is literally really hot in my room right now and I need something to keep me cool. Without the necessary resources for survival, the villagers turned to Lavios, the sea deity, and prayed for food and clean water. Lavios granted them their wish, but only under one condition, that the merfolk would be allowed to live peacefully among them, and for many decades they did. Over time, however, the merfolk were gradually discriminated among the against because they were considered abnormal half-humans, inferior beings. Lavios became enraged and created an underwater kingdom, now known as Ancient Aquadine to personally lead and protect the merfolk himself. Until one day, the ancient civilization ceased to exist. Over here. Ah, some voice acting as well. And so, oh, we're on a river tour, guys. And so, the people of the land named this town Aquadine as a tribute to the sea deity. This is also one of the many statues sculptured by believers of the merfolk lore. Really? Violetta. Are we seriously supposed to believe that mermaids exist? They're not called mermaids. It's perfectly understandable that most people share the same skepticism, especially those who aren't from here. Even, though to, even today, people continue to debute over the validity of the lore. Despite the lack of reliable evidence, however, it's impossible to ignore that the beliefs of our ancestors shaped much of our culture. As a result, the desire to please Lavios drove the town to become one of the best in the world at controlling water pollution. Aquadine even prides itself as a top exporter in both seafood and bottled fresh water. Part of the interruption, but I was wondering if he had any suggestions for a nice cup of coffee. Hmm. Actually, we're near one right now. Next to the statue, you'll find the Friends uh, Cafe, a family-owned business that has been around for over 50 years. They serve some of the best coffee and sweets in town, so I highly recommend you pay a visit. If you'd like, I could book a reservation for you two. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. My pleasure. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Hey. Is there a marble statue? marble st store around here <laughs> we talk about statues when i get for another word that looks like it i have a sort of a default word marbles my daughter has been collecting marbles since she was a kid i could never understand why but she absolutely loves them we all have our own different loves daddy there's no need to be ashamed about what you like though it is the first time anyone's asked me about marbles do you have any marbles? I'm joking, of course. <laughs> you might have some luck checking the souvenir shops in the mall. I can write you a list when we get back. Isn't that great? Let's go there together after the tour. Alright, thanks, Dad. It must be nice for a family to spend time like this. I wish I could do that more often. Is that our singing? <laughs> As the gondola continues to tour the family, his smile gradually fades away and said, his voice takes its place, a voice that soon breaks into a bout, whatever that is. Gentle words rhythmically push through the water as calmly as the soothing breeze, the white gondola rides casually over the 
clear waves and glide through a narrow passage. People enchanted by the song open the windows and stop to listen as the sound of his voice travels across the canal. It's Sel's voice, isn't it? Sel is singing today. Good for, good for you, Diane. Okay, that's ended. I didn't know how long that was going to... Oh, great. Um, hold on. I have nothing against the developers or the voice actors, but... Wait. Wait, it's under music voice, not under vo volume voice? Okay, that's a little bit of a bug, because that should be under voice volume. I'm going to have to turn that off for a moment. I'm, just, I'm really sorry, folks, but I feel like all the voices are under one. Good for you, Diana. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Anya continues drawing the canal while trying to ignore Diana, who is scrambling frantically for her phone. Catch you later. Without wasting another second, Diana hurries along before she misses her chance. Bye. Bye. Dying inches away. Okay, is it? Is it over? <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes! It doesn't need to be on a repeat. <laughs> Dying inches away through a crowd of people who are also trying. Okay, so, so it doesn't need to be on repeat. To the sound of Sal's voice, Celia's voice. She is absolutely determined to get a picture with him. <laughs> I gotta hurry before I miss him. Ah, as Diana chases after his voice, she bumps into someone, and all their belongings fell with them. Look where you're going. <laughs> My bad. You okay? Me. I am fine. Are you injured? Sorry about that. No, I'm good. Sorry about that. Diane stares out to the other girl for a moment, as if she recognized her from somewhere. Somewhere far, far away. From an ancient kingdom. An ancient civilization somewhere. But we're not that old, are we? Oh. Wait, I know you. You're... Farewell. An enigma, it would seem. Still stunned, Diana speeches as she gets a better look at the blonde. <laughs> it doesn't take long before she cracks a smile. She's Elizabeth, if I recall. <laughs> I can't believe she's here in Aquadine. Gotta get a picture of her. Oh no, my phone. I just got this darn thing. As Diana picks up her cracked smartphone from the ground, the other girl disappears into the crowd. Man, where'd she go? I just saw her. Well, at least I can still snap a picture of Sally. Click. Wow. Done yet? Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. You're heading home? Maybe. Maybe we're heading home. Maybe we're not heading home. Well. I am, but my mum's gonna have me help around the cafe again. She's a real slave driver, you know. Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, it's not like there's another visual novel recently that has mentioned that those two words, slave driver. <laughs> And working around a similar sort of environment as well. Not a cafe, but a very similar one that offers out food and stuff. Sounds troublesome. I know, right? Oh yeah, guess what? Mm -hmm. What? I saw Elizabeth Rhodes today. I had no idea she'd be here. Can't believe I didn't know about it. Meh, just another human. <gasps> She's a celebrity. What else could you ask for? Actually... An alien. I think they'll be more interesting than something. Uh. So are you one of those people that believes in UFOs? That believes in the Martians and stuff like that? Okay, let me just see. Okay, cool. I'm fine with music, but not when it's continuous singing. It's just a personal pet peeve when trying to talk, that's all. Nothing against the voice actors or actresses. By no means stretch of the imagination. <laughs> you are so weird. Anyway, Elizabeth is pretty easygoing, unlike somebody I know. Are you saying that Anya is not easygoing? Fine. Mock me all you like, but aliens are adorable. You are Anya, we like you already. Because I think aliens are adorable too. D you don't just judge something from the outside. By the way, want to stop by the cafe today? My mum hasn't seen you in... Forever since yesterday evening. No thanks. Just hang out with me for a bit longer, pretty please. Whatever. <sighs> Alright. It's not like I've got anything better to do anyway. You sound like that's like the better of the two evils. So who are we actually playing as? 
Aquadine's famous cafe has a classic charm, as it is decorated with an array of fresh vines and traditional paintings. Old wine bottles and flower vases occupy the shelves, among other antiques. Anya and Diane wait near a well-kept jukebox, while a lady in her forties is serving a customer. I imagine that's her mother. What's up? Mom, I'm home. Get moving. Diana, hurry up and get that table's order. See what I mean? Hey there. Anya, it's been a while. Wow. Well. I guess it has been. Well, are you saying that Susan's older then? <laughs> you're busy. You're buying something, right? Maybe. I was going to say you're busy, but that's just buying. My bad, folks. Probably. Enjoy. Great. Have a seat. Let Diana know if you need anything, okay? After responding with a mere nod, Anya finds an empty table and quickly makes herself a home, reflecting how well she's known them. Of course, it would be impolite if you didn't. Anyways, save common routes. Oh, it even has, like, the route that you're on in the game. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat indeed. Settings. No, we won't be going full screen. Mucks up my recording settings, that's why. And we've only got a encyclopedia. I just noticed that. Uh, settings, encyclopedia. Um, this game is absolutely for free, folks. So if you want to know what all of these do, then I recommend downloading the games for yourself. There'll be a link in the description below, where it just says game, and then the link to the, um... The game itself is Ezio page. Uh, after responding with me and nod, Anya finds an empty table and quickly makes herself a home, reflecting how well she's known them. I think I've already said that part before. Dressed in her maid uniform, Diana returns with two cups of coffee and notices Anya occupied with her sketchbook. Oh, oh that's the one you drew today, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like this visual novel is going between different characters. So I think we are on the perspective of Diana, because she, we keep following around Diana, but at the same time, the tour guide earlier was not that, so... It could be shifting between different characters, or we just have not spoken yet today. That reminds me, I have a teeny tiny favour to ask of you. How teeny tiny? Diane proudly whips out her phone and shows off her picture of Sally. She's like a kid who just pulled the best toy out of a cereal box. Could you draw Celia for me? I really want to hang another picture of him in my room. Wow. You already cracked your phone? Um... Yeah, it happened during the whole bumping into Elizabeth fiasco. What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Your drink is on the house. <laughs> Don't we do that with friends anyways? Nah. Anya's eyes roll down at a cup of coffee she just sipped. She then looks back at Diana who has the brightest smile on her face. That explains why she suddenly wants to treat me to some coffee. How prudent. Actually... I'll just pay for it. It's only like 300 altos anyway. Please, Anya. Draw a set of you for me. I'm fine. Not worth my time. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're harsh. My act of kindness isn't worth a gift from a friend. Is that clear? It's not an act of kindness if you expect something in return. Hmm, that can go both ways. I, I thought we were friends. Okay, Whatever. fine. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. Well, I know Sally is pretty popular, but why do you like him? Isn't he just another gondola? <laughs> gondolier? Everyone knows that he's the youngest gondolier in town, but he's also really kind and talented. Even a lot of the local girls ride with him. Um, whichever way you spam that, folks, that is entirely up to you. But I don't seem very smart. That's just how the fandom goes. I hear his granddaddy can be strict, though. But he doesn't let that bother him when he's with customers. Anya drinks her coffee as she pretends to listen to Diana's constant rambling. Oh, dear me. The following morning begins with a little more noise than usual as a bit of interesting news made its way around the school. Classes haven't started yet, so students are speculating as much as they please. Hey, did you hear that we're going to get a transfer student? Really? Oh, Cameron. Oh, are we are? I didn't hear anything about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. 
They're saying it's someone outside of Aquadine. Okay, so that must be our protagonist then. Who did you hear it from? The teachers. I was passing by the fossil tea room and they sounded kind of excited for some reason. Hmm. I wonder why. I don't know. Don't know. Maybe she's really smart or something. Or it could even be a he, I don't know. The morning bell sounds, marking the beginning of the first class. Everyone takes their seats as the teacher steps inside. Hey, folks. Morning class, we've got a transfer student from Cephria who will be joining us today. Now the rumors are confirmed, people will seem surprised that the transfer would be coming to this class. Nearly everyone's attention is directed at the door, curious to meet the new face. Let me say something. Go and introduce yourself. Ah, wait, isn't that, isn't that Elizabeth from earlier? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. A girl with blonde hair stands in front of a class. I need to find the stunned reactions of their faces. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Rhodes, and it is certainly a pleasure to meet you all. The class cheers with excitement as they couldn't believe that Elizabeth Rhodes, the famous city of Cephalia, is joining them as a fellow classmate. Despite Elizabeth already introducing herself, Diana still gazes on with disbelief, like she could be mixing her up with someone else. It's just too good to be true. Is this... a dream? Taken back by the coincidence, Elizabeth recognizes Diane and seems equally surprised. The chance of meeting each other again was so slim. That's how fate is, ladies and gentlemen. It's always going to be something along those lines. She waves back to Diane in a way that is perfectly identical to how she bids her fans farewell after a concert. Well, I doubt it, sir. <laughs> She's the real deal. Oh my goodness, this is the best day of my life. Incredible. So that's why the teachers were so excited. <laughs> I know, I know, Elizabeth is famous and all, but she's still a classmate. Save all the fanboy, fangirl, fan, whatever business for later. I like that, Mr. Norton. My, my. It appears introduction is unnecessary. Oh, yeah. In that case, I'll just talk about myself. Hey. Boo! Hey, Diane. That's not nice. Diana, get back to your seat. Boo! Nobody wants to know about you, Mr. Norton. We all want to know about the new transfer student that's a Cena. You see, I wasn't exactly from around here either. So many years sailing the seas and carrying out missions on the good old SS Newport. How wonderful! You are a sailor? That's fascinating. And there goes the spotlight. Hey! Sailors can teach you some really interesting and valuable experiences, okay? I'm not speaking from experiences, but I imagine through all of their adventures throughout their lives, they can give you some really interesting insights. Heh, <laughs> I've been to all sorts of places, but if there's something special about this town, I'll tell you that. Have you ever been to Cephalia? You bet. You bet. I've been everywhere, Goldie. Pardon? Goldie? Yeah, that's your very own nickname. I like you like. Not really. Well, but man, with all of us shipmates bunched up together, it can get freaking hot in there. Would have traded anything for some fresh air. Now that you've mentioned it, is that why you never wear a suit like the other teachers? Because he can get hot very easily. <laughs> right on the money, Karate Kid. You sure you don't, you, you sure you don't want to see me sweat? <laughs> That's not a question that you ask your students, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if he keeps us up, we'll start, we'll start stall out for clock. Almost forgot. Oh, almost forgot, but I got a class to teach. Never mind. <laughs> There's a seat over there. Why can't you just call her Elizabeth? Or Lizzie, or... With all eyes still on Elizabeth, strolls down a few rows towards the empty seat by the corner. Open up your history, folk. Or, history... History books, folks. It's time to go back in time. <laughs> wow, that was kind of lame, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering, Chatterbox. Go ahead and start us off on page 64. <laughs> ah, lovely. That used to happen in school as well when that one kid who doesn't shut up then gets to be volunteered to read out what's within the book. Like, that's the kind of karma that we still need. Who do you think I am? Page 64. Sorry about that. Wish I could go back in time. 
After a more tense lesson than normal, class finally concludes for the day. However, no one is rushing out of the doors like they usually do, which is a rare sight. I wonder why. Is it something to do with a new transfer student? I couldn't imagine that being such a coincidence, a coincidental thing, huh? Hey, folks. That's it for today, folks. Also, could someone show Elizabeth around before the next class? Oh. I'll do it, Mr. Norton. Several other students desperately volunteer as well, but Mr. Norton is looking elsewhere. After scanning the library room, he spots a bookworm reading alone at his desk. Someone who couldn't care less about helping some new student. He's a perfect target. Romeo, I got a mission for you. Robin? What's going on? Earth to Romeo! No. Could you stop calling me that? My name isn't Romeo. It's Robin. Is this our protagonist? I'm getting confused as to who's the protagonist in this game. Like, there are certain games where the protagonist kind of differs between certain characters, but there's gotta be a protagonist. I mean, even the synopsis says about a story who gives part-time tours to pay for his mother's... Yeah, but literally the synopsis has a protagonist entailed in there, but we have not yet met him, so this could be it, Robin? You bet. Sure it is, anyway. Show the new girl around, would you? <laughs> what? Why four eyes of all people? Who barely talks to... Hey, Diana. I have glasses as well, okay? I take heavy offence to that. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. With Mr. Norton's overwhelming presence before him, Robin twitches. He knows all too well there's no escape once his teacher's mind is made up. Fine. See you around. Atta boy. I'll leave her to you. If it is too much of a hassle, I will not require any assistance. Don't worry about that. Ah, no need to be shy. You two will get along just fine. As Robin reluctantly closes his book, Elizabeth greets him with a smile. That sight alone is enough to make any boy fall head over her heels. Uh, but he doesn't waver. If you don't mind. It appears I have an appointment with you. Whatever. Sounds like it. The two of them begin their school tour. Leave the rest of the class frustrated and disappointed, including Diana. Hey. What are you trying to pull, Mr. Norton? Now, kids. Romeo hardly talks to anyone and the girl is new here, so I just want to make sure we all get along. Really? Really? That looks more like a setup. <laughs> I've got no idea what you're talking about. I don't believe it. But I wanted to interview her and stuff. <laughs> Come on, Diana. We all know you just want to stall through the next class. Well... I've got no idea what you're... I have no idea what you're talking about. Great, of course you don't. Of course you don't... Hey, H works. That's lovely. With several students watching from the windows, Robin seems more anxious than ever to finish the tour. He's clearly not comfortable with this much attention. Let's just get this over with. Forgive me. Allow me to apologize for interrupting your reading. You appear to be enjoying that book. Whatever. It's fine. Mrs. Norton is just doing whatever he wants. Can't do much about it. My, my. He certainly is an amusing teacher. I have yet to meet one as charismatic as him. I guess. Well, you made a pretty big commotion today. Oh. It appears so. I was rather surprised to learn that I am also well known in Aquadine. Hmm. What do you do? Pardon? You really do not know who I am? No. No, just some blonde girl who transferred in this morning. Okay, so as much of a bookworm as you are, you don't read into Cena's. But there you go, that is a very specific area, don't you think? Or for general knowledge peeps, that could be something that is quite generalistic. A blunt choice of words, but as you know now, I am Elizabeth Rhodes, a famous concert singer from Cephalia. A singer, huh? You plan on performing here too? You see. I recently moved to Aquadine due to my father's business, so I'm uncertain at the moment. Even if that's the reason why you moved, you could still perform here if you wanted. There are several opera houses here. I feel like Robin and Elizabeth are kind of like... Um, good for each other. In a way of just mutual friends. Only because, well, Robin isn't going to 